Here is Claire Finkelstein. She is a law professor at Pennsylvania Law School. Thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us. This attack was one of the deadliest on the Jewish Thanks. community in, in US history. Does it reflect a rise in anti-Semitism in the country? It very much does. And it really lies at the intersection of two tendencies that we see, both of which are on the increase. Number one, we have an increase in anti-Semitism due to an increase in hate and uh, a rise in white nationalism. Uh, and that has been going on for a number of years. But then on top of it, with the current political atmosphere in the U.S., we have an increase in anti-Muslim sentiment. And with this story, the two of them come together because this suspect was convinced that the Jewish community was partially responsible for increasing uh, and assisting immigrants that were coming into the country, some of whom were Muslim. So it was a, um, obviously a very deranged and disturbed individual who ran these two things together. Uh, and, of course, they, they became a target um, in their place of worship, um, in this case, Jewish worshipers. And the reality that you describe, and we were just running through some facts and figures there about um, Jews and, and other groups of people being the target of hate crimes, but it, particularly perhaps with the Jewish community, it kind of clashes with this perception, uh, this historical context of the United States being one of the safest countries in the world for Jews. Are hate crimes being driven then by the spread of this anti-Semitic white supremacist ideology, or is it just that existing forces are becoming emboldened? I think it's a little bit of both. So there was always a level of anti-Semitism and white nationalism in this country. What we have seen with the current administration is that this president, when he speaks to his base, really fuels white nationalists. And we saw that down in Charlottesville, and we saw uh, the president's much resented and decried response to Charlottesville, in which he said that Famously, there were good people on both sides. Um, so white nationalists feel emboldened uh, with President Trump. When you add to that social media, which is uh, like giving white nationalists a bullhorn, where they can find one another in a centralized place, in this case, for this attacker, a website called Gab, which uh, is proud of the fact that they do not censor as much as other websites. Uh, they, a very small but vocal minority, come to control the politics and, of course, it's infectious. And so we have many people who um, start to latch on to this ideology, who may be somewhat deranged, disturbed individuals, who might not otherwise find this as an outlet for their uh, anger. As you say, social media has provided a platform for some of these individuals, not least uh, the, the synagogue gunmen. But can this sort of behavior on social media potentially be used by law enforcement to identify individuals that would make that leap from racist, anti-Semitic, hateful views and opinions to actually committing acts of violence? I'm very glad that you asked that question because, in fact, one of the things that I wanted to say is that we use social media in a very negative way. In other words, we have inadequate censorship and, therefore, these racist ideologies can catch on. Um, but we don't use it in the way that it might be beneficial, namely to call out individuals for law enforcement to identify individuals who are at risk of acting out. Uh, it's particularly disturbing when you see that in this case, the shooter said right before he went in, I'm going in. Now, if we had better monitoring of social media, we, law enforcement officials might be able to act on that immediately, but that would require an entirely different level of responsiveness and alerts based on social media. It's been, it's been quite a week, hasn't it, because this 
horrific tragedy in Pittsburgh, yes. Pennsylvania, comes after uh, the wave of suspicious packages that were sent to high-profile critics of U.S. President Donald Trump and, indeed, the, the two black shoppers that were killed at a grocery store. Uh, how do you see all these things potentially coming together, affecting the mood, the climate of the country, just ahead of some crucial elections? It's extremely demoralizing and discouraging. And in this case, for me personally, I should add that one of the victims in Pittsburgh was someone that I knew quite well. Uh, and so it's, it's very, very painful to watch. This one cuts particularly close to home. I think in advance of the midterms, um, it will energize the base to some extent, the Democratic base. But un unfortunately, there's also uh, an an increased energy on the far right as well. And we see an increased political activism all across the board. Uh, it's very, very hard to tell whether or not this will have an impact on the midterms. But I do think that people who are concerned about the growing levels of hate, discrimination, uh, and uh, racial bias in this country may have an increased incentive to turn out at the polls. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to, to speak to us. We do appreciate it. From Philadelphia, Claire Finkelstein, law professor at thank Pennsylvania Law School.